This is a smartphone that's been hyped up for quite a while now, the Nothing Phone One. It comes from Carl Pei, who helped found the OG flagship killer brand, OnePlus, a few years back. So is the Nothing Phone One another revolution in the making, or something else entirely? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our full review. The OnePlus brand was all about providing a ton of bang for your buck, even on some levels offering flagship grade quality. Nothing, on the other hand, seems to be going in a bit of a different direction. Rather than providing cutting edge specs, the Nothing Phone 1 is pretty middle of the road for a 2022 mid-ranger, but where it does stand out is its unique design. Sure, the flat back and sides are really similar to the iPhones, but the transparent glass is something special. You can't exactly see the inner workings of the phone, most of it is hidden behind plastic covers, but you still get the effect that this is some kind of futuristic prototype. This feeling gets even stronger when you see the other reason the back is transparent, to let the Nothing Phone 1's glyph LEDs shine through. Did you ever wish you had a set of flashing neon lights in your pocket? Well, there you go, except these don't light up in different colors. Well, that's not 100% true. There's one red indicator that can light up when you're shooting video. You can also use the LEDs as a fill light for the rear camera if you need it in a darker situation. Otherwise, the glyphs provide you info on what's going on with the phone, lighting up for calls or notifications. There's even a separate one for charging, where the light lets you know how much juice you have so far. The glyph interface lights look flashy and they're practical on paper, but the problem is most of the time you're probably not looking at the back of your phone, you're using the front. And if your phone is sleeping on a desk, a regular always-on display would do the job. To make use of the Nothing Phone 1's unique feature, you'd have to get used to resting your phone face down instead. The build quality here on the Nothing Phone 1 feels pretty solid, and you do get IP53 rated splash proofing here too. It's not full waterproofing, but at least it's something official. The display is a 6.55 inch OLED with a 1080p resolution, Gorilla Glass 5 protection, and a 120Hz refresh rate. The high refresh rate is adaptive, sort of. It'll dial down to 60 hertz in some scenarios, like when you have static pictures on the screen, to save energy. You also get a responsive 240 hertz touch sampling rate here too. The Phone One screen is pretty nice, especially for a mid-ranger. You get equally thin bezels all around, then there's the great contrast typical of an OLED, plus support for 10-bit color and HDR10+. The colors here are quite accurate too, and we really enjoyed the haptic feedback here. This panel is pretty bright, but in this regard, it isn't quite flagship grade. We measured a maximum of around 460 nits with a manual slider, and this boosted to 660 nits in auto mode, in bright conditions. The Nothing Phone 1 has a stereo speaker setup, with the earpiece doubling as the top one. They earned a score of very good on our loudness test, but the sound quality is just average, with nice highs, but weak mids and bass. There is one thing we wanted to talk about which we usually don't, the audio quality through headphones. We typically don't run into issues here, but the Nothing Phone 1 has some real problems when it comes to the frequency response. It's all over the place. And that's regardless of whether you're using wired or wireless headphones. Plus the crosstalk between the two channels through wired headphones is probably the worst we've ever measured. Things really don't sound right, and we've confirmed it on two units on two different continents just last week, so we guess all of the devices are affected. Hopefully it's possible for nothing to fix it through a software update. Regardless, it's a pretty weird problem to have for a company whose first product was a pair of earbuds. For biometrics, the Nothing Phone 1 has an optical under-display fingerprint reader. It's well-placed and accurate. And you can get the phone with 128 or 256 gigs of storage, but that's not expandable. The interface of the Nothing Phone 1 is a pretty minimal skin on top of stock Android 12, and as a result, it feels a lot like using a Google Pixel phone. Everything is quite smooth and snappy. One unique touch they've done here is the font. You get these dot matrix style headings here and there. There are a few custom widgets here too. These include a gallery to show off your NFTs and some clock and weather widgets. There's a pretty minimalistic game mode, which basically just adds Do Not Disturb and Mistouch Prevention for your selected titles. And of course, you get your controls for the Glyph LEDs on the backside. One thing we were a bit disappointed in is that there's no special synergy with the Nothing One earbuds. You have to install their app and they work the same as on any other phone. 
Let's move on to this phone's chipset performance. And like I mentioned earlier, Nothing isn't going for flagship killing specs here, but they're still quite respectable. The Nothing Phone 1 is packing an upper mid-range Snapdragon 778G plus 5G, which is basically just the next step down compared to flagship grade silicon. In benchmarks, it sits right below phones that run on a Snapdragon 870, and we were able to pull off smooth gaming and multitasking too. And even better, the Nothing Phone 1 is quite stable when it comes to thermal management, and it did an excellent job in our stress test for sustained performance, with no overheating. On to battery life. The Nothing Phone 1 has a 4500 mAh power pack, and with it was able to score a good endurance rating of 108 hours in our battery life tests. The phone supports up to 33 watt wired charging through USB power delivery. You don't get a charger in the box though. With a proper adapter, we were able to charge the Nothing Phone 1 from 0 to 48% in half an hour. It's nothing too exciting. There is support for 15 watt wireless charging too, as well as reverse wireless charging. Now let's talk about the Nothing Phone 1's dual cameras. On the back, there's a 50 megapixel main cam with OIS and a 50 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus that can take macro shots. The main cam's 12.5 megapixel photos are pretty good. There is a lot of resolved detail, well developed foliage, and the sharpening isn't over the top. The colors are a bit on the saturated side, and the dynamic range isn't extremely wide, but it's natural looking. Portrait shots look great. They're well exposed with plenty of detail and low noise. The separation is quite accurate too. Shots from the ultra wide look nice, with plenty of detail and low noise, and the distortion correction is also well done. While the colors are realistic looking, they're a bit different from those of the main cam. And the dynamic range here is just average. Since the ultra wide has autofocus, you can take close ups with it. These are sharp enough, with pleasant colors and contrast. In low light, photos from the main cam are great, with a true to life exposure and dynamic range. There's plenty of detail thanks to balanced noise reduction, and the colors are saturated. Turn on night mode and you get a brighter exposure and punchier colors. There's more detail in shadows, and blown highlights are restored. Nighttime photos from the ultra wide cam are surprisingly good. There's again balanced noise reduction, more than enough detail, and a natural looking exposure. With night mode, the ultra wide photos have a brighter exposure and boosted colors, but there's less detail and an over processed look. Selfies are taken with a 16 megapixel front facing cam, and they're good. The sharpness could be better, but there's enough detail, and you also get low noise and great colors, contrast, and dynamic range. You can record video with both rear cameras in up to 4K resolution at 30fps, and electronic stabilization is available in all resolutions and frame rates. 4K footage from the main cam is great, with natural looking processing, plenty of detail, and low noise. The colors are lively, and the dynamic range is praiseworthy. 4K clips from the ultra wide cam are pretty good for this sort of camera. There's a lot of detail and low noise. The colors are a bit muted though, and the dynamic range is average. So that's the Nothing Phone 1. Sure, it came with a ton of hype, but the features here, besides the glyph lights on the back, are nothing too out of the ordinary for a mid-ranger. Still, even though the specs don't blow anyone out of the water, they're pretty solid all around, and the price is competitive too. The only places the Nothing Phone 1 really falls behind are the charging speed and the audio quality through headphones. Also, it isn't going to be sold in the US for now. If you do find it available, it's a mid-ranger worth recommending, as long as nothing does something about that horrible headphone audio. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe and see you on the next one.